ಕೃಪಾಸಿಂಧುಚಿತಾನಂಭವನೆಭ್ಯೋ Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shrimate Bhaktivedanta Swami Nityanamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatyade Shatarine Ananda Lila Maya Vigrahaya Ema Badibyo Chabisundaraya Tasmai Mahapre Marasa Pradaya Chaitanya Chandra Yanamo Namaste Chaitanya Chandra Yanamo Namaste Chaitanya Chandra Yanamo Namaste Shri Chaitanya Chandra Yanamaha Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, dear devotees, we are, we the people, we, we, we just getting so many sufferings, especially nowadays, and these suffering are so painful, and many people, when they are suffering, they say, Oh God, oh Lord, why I have not died? Why I have not died? But really, they don't want to die. Because death is also one type of suffering. Many uh, in the time of death, many are passing stool, vomiting in the time of death because they don't want to leave their body. Because the soul, on Sanskrit, the soul is Atma. Atma doesn't want to leave the body. Therefore, they are suffering a lot. So in this material world, suffering is everywhere. Suffering is giving, we can say, miserable life. Or we can say in Sanskrit, Dukkha. Is giving dukkha to us. Suffering is giving so much dukkha to us. Like in Sanskrit they said yantrana. So many people suffering around us. And the, the living entity, jiva, in Sanskrit jiva is the living entity, is not able to understand that when I... that when I will enter into this material world, in, in this Maya, I will suffer. But still by entering in this Maya, Jiva again and again suffering. And those who have understood that this is Maya world, or we can say world of Maya, the illusory energy of the Supreme Lord, so, and they, if they understand this, they, they will get so much suffering here. So they want to become free from all types of sufferings. Therefore, they choose the spiritual path. In the spiritual path, the, their suffering will be less. Therefore, they chose the spiritual path and they know 
that due to our ignorance, we suffer a lot. We suffer a lot due to our avidya, Sanskrit, ignorance. And due to entering into Maya's clutch, we are suffering. So Jiva realizes, Jiva is realizing that by living the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord, Krishna, we suffer a lot. Therefore, he will never leave. He will try to remain at the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord. That is called Krishna consciousness. The realization is coming that due to this material energy, Maya, I was suffering so much. This is very painful situation. I have undergone. I don't want anymore. I don't want to suffer anymore. So we have taken shelter at the lotus feet of Krishna and we follow the supreme path. You can say Paramartika path. The path which is giving Paramartha, the supreme benefit. But we just come to the supreme lord Krishna and just taking shelter. But there that is not possible. That is not possible at all. Suppose a person is in clutches of Maya and he just come and take shelter here at the lotus feet of Krishna and no suffering will be there but it is not possible. Immediately it is not possible. Therefore the spiritualists they recommend to go for sadhana. Sadhana means practice. When I am doing sadhana, I use my energy, my efforts, dhana, my wealth in devotional service to Krishna. So first, we should do sadhana. We should be engaged in sadhana, we should engage all our senses. And gradually we will take shelter at the lotus feet of Krishna. And we know that the lotus feet of Krishna is that place where there is no illusion, no fear, no lamentation. Ashoka, Aboya, Amrita, Adhara, Tomara, Charananda, Stana. So, when we joined <coughs> our spiritual practice, uh, the time uh, we were told that if we go for spiritual practice, there will be no suffering. So you will be peaceful and blissful. We are told by advanced devotees that chant Hare Krishna and be happy. There will be no suffering at all. And therefore we joined the, this Krishna consciousness. But again we suffer here. After coming to this sadhana path, again we are suffering. After coming to the spiritual practice, we are suffering. Then we came to know that this suffering, due to my past deeds, my prarabdha karma, what I have, which I have done in the past lifetimes. I having prarabdha karma, therefore I am suffering. Lord Brahma is saying in the 14th chapter of the 10th canto, Tate nukampam susamikshamano bunjan naivatmakritam vipakam Vidvagvapurdhir vidadhan namaste Bunjane mukti pade sidaya bhag. In this shloka, it is said, if one is getting suffering, that is mercy of the Supreme Lord. By knowing that he becomes free from all bad situation, one can tolerate everything. Then, during this sadhana, 
during this spiritual practice he is getting some suffering but he is also getting pleasure because he knows this suffering I got by the mercy of Lord is it is for my purification we know the story about Vasudeva Kushti like he was uh, having disease leprosy Vasudeva Vasudeva he was very peaceful because he knew that this is my karma this is the result of my past activities First of all, one should know after coming to spiritual life why this type of suffering will come which, give, which gives pain and not pleasure. Why? One should try to search the cause of the painful situation in the spiritual life. Because actually the spiritual life is free from all sufferings. But if we have some... we have no peace in our mind in spite of so much sadhana, we should search the cause. This is called bhajan. What we are doing, this is called bhajan. Bhajan means to serve. One is doing bhajan, means he is serving the Supreme Lord. Or we can say Bhagavan in Sanskrit. Everyone, he is serving Bhagavan, person serving Bhagavan, he is slowly, slowly is getting pleasure there. And also he will be controlled by Bhagavan, controlled by Supreme Lord. In Sanskrit it is said, Bhagavata Adhina. He is completely under the control of Bhagavan. He is not under the control of karma, not under the control of his past activities. Now he already took shelter of the, the lotus feet of Bhagavan. Now he is controlled only by Bhagavan, not by his destiny. Like I give example of Srila Gorgavinda Swami, Srila Prabhupada disciple, Srila Prabhupada gave him instruction to develop, to build and develop big, big temple. It was the last project of Srila Prabhupada in Bhuvaneshwar, in Orissa. And he said, it also told him to become Guru. And he became Guru, and after maybe three, four years, he got very hard disease. Very hard disease. And maybe two years he was suffering. He could not move. His uh, bone of his leg became like this, like this finger. You can understand. But he never thought about his disease. He never cried out of pain. One time he cried, and his, one of his disciples, he saw him crying, and he asked, Guru Maharaj, you are crying? You are getting pain in your leg? No. But why you are crying? So, Guru Maharaj, you are thinking that Srila Prabhupada was a liar? Then... Srila Gurgavinda Swami became angry on him. He said, Why are you saying like this? Why are you saying like this? No, no, no. Guru Maharaj, if you are crying, maybe Srila Prabhupada was a liar. Why are you saying to me? It is giving so much pain to me. But why are you crying, Guru Maharaj? No, Prabhupada said, Under my guidance, this Krishna Balaram temple will be completed. But how you can say that Srila Prabhupada was a liar? And he stopped. Since that he was never crying. So he was crying only because he could not complete seva given by his spiritual master. And uh, actually those who are in spiritual path uh, they have no sufferings. Even in the suffering, they are also happy. Their goal to go to Krishna. So, why one will get so much pain in his heart? Because Krishna's place, Galoka Vrindavan, Krishna's Dhamma, is very 
very blissful. There is no suffering at all. Even a person in this lifetime, he can realize this, the presence of the Supreme Abode, of the Supreme Lord. He will be always blissful, it is said in Shastra. Brahma Bhuta Prasanatmana Shochati Nakankshati. He becomes Jivan Mukta, Jivan Mukta Sauchate. He became liberated, still he is in this body, but he is liberated from all sufferings, all karma. Because he completely engaged in service to the Supreme Lord by body, mind, and species. Kaya Manavakya. So, why he will get so much pain in his heart? Why it is, how this is possible? But uh, one thing is there. The more one will progress in the sadhana path, in the spiritual path, one type of suffering will come. And that suffering will give so much pain to the devotee. Who is practicing Krishna consciousness. And that suffering is very difficult. It's very difficult to find out what is the cause of this suffering and also very difficult to come out from this suffering. By gradually, if one is advancing, the suffering also following. Very important thing. You should try to understand this. The more you advance in spiritual path, the suffering also at your backside. And you will... You will be not able to know what this suffering is. The suffering caused by Maya, caused by Maya, one can overcome. That is not a problem. But this person is free from Maya, we can say. Any type of suffering Maya is creating, we can tolerate. That is not a problem. But during sadhana, during spiritual process, spiritual sadhana, one type of suffering comes. And that suffering is what? There are four types of anarthas, according to Vishwanath Chikravarti Thakur. Anartha means things which give sufferings to us. And uh, anartha, the literal meaning is, which is useless. Anartha. That is, Dushkriti Jata Anartha. Sukriti Jatanat, Aparadha Jatanat, Bhakti Jatanat. We understand these Jatanatas. Dushkriti Jatanat means coming from Dushkriti, bad activity, sinful reactions. Someone was taking meat, killing animals. Sukriti Jatanat, one was doing many pious activities. He wants to do some, so to give welfare to society like this. But it, it is also obstacle because he cannot practice spiritual. Spiritually he cannot advance because he also wants some position in this world. Aparadha Jatanartha. It is coming from Aparadha. When we are doing, committing some offense at least, we are chanting Hare Krishna mantra and we are not attentive. We are looking at smartphone, we are looking at our uh, laptop and think, doing something, other things. Mechanical. Process became mechanical. But, uh, for example, this person already became free from these three types of anarthas. And number four is Bhakti Jata Anartha. What is the anartha coming from bhakti? So one is rendering devotional service, but anartha will be there. How? If someone is doing bhakti, so how anartha will be there? And when it comes, when this anartha will come? So, for example, someone is practicing bhakti devotional service, and when the maturity stage will come, this anartha will appear. This anartha, it is what? Pratishta Asha. Desire for name, 
fame, adoration. The more one is advanced, it will go, it will follow this devotee. So it is very subtle. Other people cannot see, they cannot recognize this sanartha. Even one cannot understand somehow that pratishta desire or desire for name, fame, adoration has come inside his heart. But he doesn't know sometimes that it happens. Thou it remains in the heart in very subtle stage. But it gives so much pain. The result is so much pain. And those who are intelligent sadhak, they can understand this. And those who are not intelligent enough, they cannot understand that how my bhajan, how this pratishta desire, desire for name, fame, adoration, entered into my bhajan, into my devotional service. Slowly, slowly. Cannot understand. But intelligent devotee will immediately understand this pratishta desire entered in my heart. Uh, this is a very important thing. So one can be very big leader, big preacher, even can be sannyasi, but he is not peaceful in mind. He always disturbed. So much disturbance is there. Sometimes we are thinking that this is spiritual advancement. When we are getting so much high position, responsibility, people give respect to us, saying, Guruji, like in India, many people was saying, were saying to me, Guruji. So, but that is, we getting so much suffering also in the mind. And uh, why we still remain in this position? Because we want this, we want this desire, we have this desire, we are cherishing this desire, how to get name, fame, adoration from others. And uh, <clears throat> like uh, this is story one uh, Maharaj he was allowing some women to messaging his feet and his guru when he saw this he chastised him. You cannot accept a message from woman. You are renounced person. You are already preacher. And the uh, other devotee, he was looking at the situation. And uh, he knew this. And Guru told him, you also should go and preach. And he came to some place and people starting, like coming, coming, and touching his feet, like in India, it's everywhere. They were paying on business and touching his feet. And he remembered that was big problem. I I saw my god brother. Is now he was chastised by my guru, that mas, woman Mataji was messaging his feet, so. He said on the bed and he didn't allow anyone to touch his feet. But uh, he asked, please don't pay obeisances to me, don't touch my feet. And he started to pray to his Guru. Please Gurudev, please protect me, please protect me, please protect me. This Pratishta desire. This Pratishta desire bring together other problems. Desire for name, fame, adoration, bringing his friends. One is pride, Dambha. Another is Kapatya. Kapatya means crookedness. Kapatya, crookedness. 
duplicity and pride, Dhamma, will come along with Pratishta desire. And as a result, our spiritual life will become empty, total empty. The ones this Kapati and Dhamma, we can say duplicity and uh, pride, will enter and our spiritual, li our spiritual life will be doomed. It will become total empty. So the intelligent sadhaka, intelligent devotee who is practicing sadhana, he will understand this. What, is, what happened to me? My life will be doomed. My spiritual life will be doomed. I should be very careful. And he will pray from the core of his heart. Please, Krishna, please protect me. From this, it is a chandalini, pratishta chandalini. Chandalini means uh, female dog eater, like this very low caste. People who who taking dog, eating dog, they call dog eaters or chandal. Chandalini, this female dog eater. So she is attacking me now and please protect me. And if someone cannot understand this, Acharya is saying that he is putting his feet on the treacher soil. Treacher soil. You just put your feet on this soil, but you cannot come out. More and more, you will go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. And one day you will be finished. You will get opposition. You will become sannyasi, guru. Everyone will give you respect. Like in, uh, I'm staying in Orissa now. In Oriya there is saying Chora Bali. Chora Bali means uh, treacher soil. Or we can say uh, sand. Bali means sand or soil. Chora means stealing, stealer. So stealing. So we, we put leg on this soil and we go deeper, deeper and deeper. So the result will be no more bhajan. So I was doing so nice bhajan before, but now is nothing. Nothing. So once we will come, we come just away from our bhajan. If we go away from our service, my is waiting. Again, my will catch us. So, and what... Uh, we cannot, we cannot surprise why in our society so many things happened in the past. Even when I joined ISKCON, immediately I got information in the internet. Many, many things I read about ISKCON. What happened, how many sannyasis, gurus fell down. But still I wanted to join because of Srila Prabhupada. I was interested in him and I understood this. Because Srila Prabhupada movement is there, so I will try to tolerate everything. But when I joined, already I came to know about how many things happen in our movement. So many advanced devotees, gurus, sannyasis, GBCs fell down. Why? Like, it was one very big guru in my country. And... Uh, so much book distribution, Sankirtan, so many followers. And what happened? It is called in Sanskrit Bhajan Chuta. Bhajana Chuta. He fell down out of his position. No more Bhajan is there due to offense. They don't want to take the names because it's just an example. You can find in any tradition, any religion, it is happening. When Srila Prabhupada came to the Western world, he knew that it will happen because people unexperienced, careless, little bit careless, unexperienced. So when we start our bhajan, when we start our bhajan, our seva, what quality should we have? It is called first should be shraddha, faith. Then after that should be sharanagati. 
surrender. Then, number three, utsaha, enthusiasm. To do bhajan, then come nishta. Nishta, this firm faith. This is a process. And when one will come to nishta stage, when he, very, he will be very fixed. Very quickly he will go to bhava stage, prema stage, it is said in Shastra. So the nishta stage might cannot give troubles to you. You will overcome death. You came to nishta stage, now only your face is towards Krishna and some uh, loving relationship also developing with Krishna. But not complete yet, not complete but some relationship started. So one is free from the clutches of Maya completely. That is called Nishta. Nishta. That is called fixed. One is fixed in stable position. That is called Nishta. Therefore, one uh, of devotee, one devotee is spoke this. Uh, he said, no one should fall down after Nishta. One devotee said. Oh, he spoke. But actually, it is not correct. But he got some reactions. One person thinking, oh, already niche time, fixed, I cannot fall down. That is not correct. He can commit offense, he can do many things. But some qualification you have, it is said. So that is called prema adhikar, qualification to develop love for Krishna. I having right to develop love for Krishna, that is called nishta. But when persons thinking, even he can be on this nishta stage, even he can be stable, fixed devotee, so everyone give respect to him, and inside his heart, this person will think, now I am Vaishnava, I am senior Vaishnava, Barishta Bhakta, no one is like me, no one is doing bhajan seva like me, my bhajan is the topmost bhajan. My seva is topmost seva. My, everybody is following me. I have so many thousands, thousands followers. Everybody wants to listen from me. So who is there like me? Then pratishta desire will come. It is waiting. Pratishta asha, desire for name, fame, adoration is waiting. So he overcame, overcome all situation. He overcame all situation. Even he came to nishta stage. He became very fixed in devotional practice, but again he is falling down due to pratishta desire. Generally, one will not fall down after nishta. But if he comes to nishta stage, it is said, uh, very quickly, gradually he will develop taste, attachment to Krishna, ecstatic emotions, rati bhava sakti, ruchi bhava sakti, Everything gradually. So why one will fall down? So pratishta it is common cause because not uh, in not only in the spiritual world pratishta is there desire for name fame adoration in material world in micro world pratishta is also there. And if you want to develop name desire for name, fame, adoration, prestige. So, there is Maya world. Material world is there. But this, this Pratishta is from material world. Therefore, they, those who develop this desire for Pratishta, for name, fame, adoration, not, we cannot say they are spiritually advanced. Jada Pratishta, it's like material 
the material platform. And also Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati is saying this material position, material name fame, is just like stool of she hog. You can imagine. It's a very abominable thing. In material world, somebody is having desire for pratishti, it will not affect so much. Because in material world, everyone is having some desire for name, fame, adoration, people are fighting, they're getting their position, they're competing. That is the nature of our material world. One is suffering will be not so much like in spiritual world. In spiritual world, is having pratishta desire, is suffering so much, not like in material field. In the spiritual sphere, the desire for pratishta is very, very dangerous. So therefore, if everyone know that this very nasty thing, like stool, and also this compared to this female dog eater, Chandalini, so many are coming, advancing the spiritual path, keeping all these nonsense things, all types of anarthas. But to become free from this pratishta desire, it is very difficult task. You can give up everything, but to give up pratishta very difficult. Therefore, like our Acharya said, I remember Srila Guru Swami said, pratishta desire is the last check gate. If you can overcome this check gate, then you can enter into the spiritual world very easily. No hindrance, no obstacle will be. Therefore, they said, Kannaka Kamini Pratishta. Three checking gates. If one will come out easily from this Pratishta gate, then Krishna's abode is very easy to get. You can easily enter into spiritual world, into Dham. So, Vaishnava Acharyas, what they say, this kapatya, duplicity, this pratishta, desire for name, fame, adoration, is very, very abominable. Bad odor coming out from that. And every moment it is burning our heart. Heart is burning. Like Raghunath Das Goswami said, it's like we are taking bath in donkey urine. You know what is... I don't know, but uh, I heard that uh, Acharya said, and they explained that donkey urine is very, very hot. When you're taking bath in donkey urine, your body is burning, burning, and smell not nice. So if someone is living with this pratishta desire, he will never be considered as pure, pure devotee. Someone is living with this desire for pratishta, he cannot be considered as pure. He is muchi, asuchi, not pure. Ah. And um, we continue next time this topic. It's very important thing. This is instructions of Acharis for everyone. For everyone who started spiritual path or already advanced. It's very important. So next time we will continue. Thank you very much. Jai Shla Prabhupada ki jai, Guru Maharaj ki jai, Ananta Kutivashnava Vrindi ki jai, Nita Gaurapramanandi Hari Hari.